Nixie tube driver controlled by Arduino. I had a Nixie tube work in progress prototype that I thought I would try to put together in a complete circuit. I have these IN12A Nixie tubes and corresponding sockets I bought on eBay a while ago that were pulled out of equipment. So I took four of these and attached them to this board and connected wires down to a breadboard where I have these K155 driver chips. This is the power supply I happen to have. I just chose this link because it had picture and description. So it takes DC 12 to 24 in and has an adjustable 85 to 235 volts DC out. There's the adjustment pot and there's the high voltage out. On the back of the tube there's an arrow showing where pin 1 is. So there's an anode and then individual cathodes for digits 0 through 9 and then there's one pin not used. And the power supply should be around 170 volts to 200 volts along with a current limit resistor on each anode. So there's a few different chips that have slightly different features. With the 74141 any binary input outside the range 0 to 9 turns off all the outputs. So that can sort of be used as a blanking feature to turn off the display. I have the K155ID1 and it looks like mine is equivalent to 74141 because I do see this particular behavior when I put in a binary number in this range. I get the outputs off. So I'm making use of this by putting in all ones when I want to turn off an individual Nixie tube. Here's the pinouts of these driver chips. You just give it 5 volts and ground and then A, B, C, D as the inputs. A is the least significant bit and then the rest of the pins are all individual outputs that go to the cathodes on the Nixie tube. Each output has a Zener clamp to ground and there's a little bit of discussion about if this gets in the way of actually using this feature to turn off all those output transistors on the chip intending to blank the display. I found one post that says the 74141 has Zener diodes at the outputs approximately 60 volts. It's a poorly thought out blanking feature that's rarely used and rarely works as intended because of those Zeners. If your Nixie tubes and your supply voltage are just right, the Nixie will turn off. But what usually happens is the 60 volt Zener drop doesn't allow the Nixie tube to properly turn off and all the digits may dimly light at the same time. The Russian K155 ID1 chips have the same function as the 74141, but those output transistors and Zeners are rated around 100 volts so the blanking function nearly always works correctly. So what they're saying is when you turn on a digit you're bringing its cathode on the pin to ground and when you turn it off we end up with this clamp voltage there so it's in the way of turning it fully off unless you have that Russian part which allows it to float closer to that high voltage supply level. If I were designing a real project I'd probably just in case add a feature to turn off the anode supply to each Nixie tube using a high voltage transistor capable of doing that. But just on the bench blanking all of these with 1111 turns off all of my cathodes properly so I can do it this way. I don't have a schematic for this project partly because I assembled it in bits and pieces over time but it's relatively straightforward enough anyway because, for example, here's the driver chip where each chip controls one Nixie tube. It's really straightforward. You just have 5 volts and ground and all the rest of the pins are four digital control inputs and then cathode outputs that go straight to the Nixie tube. So basically I'm hooking up Arduino to these four digital inputs through the PCF8574 GPIO expander and I will link to a previous GPIO expander video down below. So whatever binary number you put in on those four inputs it will activate the appropriate decimal digit by grounding the cathode on the Nixie tube. 
and I'll link to other resources. We're going to be looking primarily at the control input side of this circuit. So whatever resource you end up referring to for the high voltage side, use caution and proper safe handling techniques. So there's four driver chips here, all the wires going to the cathodes of the Nixie tube sockets. Each of the driver chips have four digital 5 volt inputs for a BCD binary coded decimal, DCB and A control. So whatever binary number is being put in, the corresponding decimal digit is going to be shown on the Nixie tube when the driver grounds that cathode. So if you want to turn on a zero in here, you would put in 0000, zero, zero, zero and then the cathode for the zero digit is going to get grounded and turn it on. So I'm using an Arduino Uno along with I squared C going to two of these PCF8574 GPIO expanders. So with eight bits, I can control two Nixie drivers. So DCBA, where A is the least significant bit, would connect to GPIO 3210 DCBA. And for another Nixie tube, DCBA would go to digital 7654. So just using the I squared C two wires from the Arduino plus five volts and ground, I can control these 16 inputs and control four digits. The mess of wiring here, I'm taking 5 volts and ground from the UNO to power each of those Nixie driver chips. And I'm also taking the 5 volts and ground here to go to the GPIO expander. And this is a wire on digital input 2 that's got an internal pull up and I can ground it right here to blank the display. Here's the front view. I just took some scrap pieces of wood and hot glued each socket to the strips just to keep things aligned to have this front panel sitting vertically straight. It needed to be about an inch off the desk, so I'm using these battery holders to just hold everything together. So here's my blanking digital input, and here's ground. So if I blank this, the outputs all go off, and the counting continues in the background. So the counter is at about 2850. I'll blank it, and when I let go, it's 2866 or so. So I can blank it temporarily, no trouble. So my particular driver chips don't seem to have any trouble blanking these by just controlling the cathodes. So I've turned off the ambient light and reset the counter and we've got leading zeros also successfully blanked. We only turn them on when we're going to have a non-zero in front of the other digits. So when this counts to 100, this one will start with a one, and so on. The sketch I came up with, I called it Nixie Print because I'm printing a number out on the Nixie display, and I've got this hard coded for a four digit Nixie tube. It'll take an integer and print the individual digits out of the integer on four Nixie tubes using the PCF8574 GPIO expander. I'm also showing debug output on the serial monitor because I was having some issues. And in order to do this, because I wanted everything to line up, I wanted to make sure I had leading zeros so I always have groups of eight bits. I found this convenient macro here that will properly add a leading zero, and I found it on one of the Arduino forums. This is just a paused serial debug. I don't need to see any live data. This is when I first powered on and it started the counter at zero. So we're just going to look at the code. In order to do four digits, I need four groups of four control bits. So I need 16 Arduino digital pins and I'm getting those by using two 8-pin PCF8574 devices. Address 20 hex and 21 hex. I'm also using digital output 2 as a blanking override control. So when I ground this, it will turn off all the digits on the display. Then in my main loop, since I have four digits, I'm counting up from 0 to 9999. I print where I'm at on the serial monitor, and then I use my Nixie print routine to also send this integer out to the Nixie tubes 
And I also have a control here that defines whether or not I'm trying to blank the display. So I called my blanking pin blank. And each time I'm going to send an integer to the Nixie tubes, at the time I do a digital read of that blanking pin. And then after I print each number, I'm just waiting 200 milliseconds before I send the next digit out. So down in Nixie print, I take in my number that I want to display and whether I want to be blanking the display or not. In order to put the appropriate digit out of the integer onto separate Nixie tubes, I need to split it out into the ones, the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands digit place. And I'm sending out two bytes to the GPIO expanders. This should probably be a capital B because it looks like least significant bit, but it's least significant byte, most significant byte. Now I'm using modular math and I'm not an expert on this, but in the end, if you have a number and you use mod 10, the result gives you a remainder which happens to be the least significant digit of this number. So that's the ones place. So now if I divide my number by 10, what I'm doing is moving the decimal place. So the result is the digit in the tens position is now going to be shifted down to the ones by dividing by 10. And then we do mod 10. And again, now we have the tens digit in a tens variable. If I divide the original number by 100 and then do mod 10, I'm basically singling out the digit that's in the hundreds place and so on. So since I want to not have leading zeros, if I have a number like just 49 on my counter, I don't want it to say 0049, I just want it to say 49 and have the first two off. So I'm doing some brute force if statements here. If the number is less than 10, meaning it's only got one digit, I want to turn off the Nixie tube in the tens place. And doing the same thing onward, I turn off the hundred or thousands place digit if we don't have that many digits. So I'm individually blanking leading zeros here. Now that I have my four separate digits representing the ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands, I need to concatenate into two bytes to send out to the GPIO expander. So my least significant byte is going to contain the ones and the tens, and the most significant byte is going to contain the hundreds and thousands. This is what goes to the GPIO expander. So let's just look at the least significant byte. All ones for a group of four control bits means off. So when we start our counter and we get to a count of one, we only have one digit, in the ones place, we have binary one, and all the other digits I want blanked, so they're all ones. And therefore, the most significant byte controlling the hundreds and thousands Nixie tube are gonna be off. The four bits controlling the tens digit is also off, and the data controlling the ones digit is gonna have 0001, which is decimal one. So these separate numbers here where I'm storing individual digit data. There are bytes, which are eight bits, but we're only ever counting zero to nine, so we only actually care about the lower four bits. Therefore, in order to send this out to each GPIO expander, each one being eight bits, I take the number representing the ones digit, I shift it to the left by four, and I still have the complete four bit data representing a count of zero to nine, and then in the bottom four bits, I have the tens data. So over here, here's the complete raw data for each eight bit number in the ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands position. So all I'm doing is taking these four least significant bits out of the ones digit, moving them over for convenience to the most significant position. So it's zero, 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 one. I take this and and it with the tens data. So by shifting the bits to the left and then anding it with the lower bits of the tens digit, I end up with this, which is 0001, that's the ones data from here, and then 1111 is the tens data from here. So if I scroll along until we actually don't have all ones, in this case, when decimal 15 is what I want to show, the tens digit is one, 
which is right here, and the ones digit is a five, and that's right here, zero, one, zero, one. So again, I need to pack this down into just a single 8-bit GPIO expander byte. So I take 0101, shift it to the left four times, and it gets dropped in here. And in the tens, it just stays here. These bottom four bits are 0001, which is right here, 0001. So I'm packing those two digits down into a single 8-bit control byte sending it out. And since I only have two digits, I still want to blank the hundreds and thousands, so those are still getting all ones, turning them off. So after we've calculated and set up the least and most significant bytes going to the GPIO expander, then I want to check, was I trying to blank the whole display with a blanking override? If so, just force everything back to all ones, and write myself a note in the serial monitor that I am trying to blank the display. And this doesn't change what the counter is at. It just overrides what's going to be sent to the Nixie tubes. So here all I'm doing is sending to the serial monitor all of this info, using the macro to do leading zeros. And finally I actually send the LSB and MSB out to each GPIO expander. And that's one way to control Nixie tubes using an Arduino or other logic circuit. Once the high voltage stuff is all taken care of and we just need to use digital logic.